What am I using for power pole distribution in my car? What can you do to stop your mobile radio from draining your car battery if you leave it on during a trip? And what would be the best first portable antenna? Coming up this time on Mailbag Monday. Hi guys, my name is Mike. Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. If you're new to the channel or you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like and share and follow me on Twitter and all that good stuff. If you have a question for me, shoot me an email, kmrd at icloud.com, and just put uh, Mailbag Monday in the subject. That way I'll see it, and maybe you will be featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, let's dive right in. Got three great questions for you, starting with, what do you use for the power pole distribution in your car, and how did you make it? Ah, someone's got a keen eye. You must have seen this in one of my uh, mobile install videos. So let's hop over to the bench, and I'll show you what, I, uh, what I'm using, but promise uh, not to laugh. It's, it's kind of embarrassing. So here it is. This is the K8 MRD power pole distribution block. Uh, gosh, I built this a long time ago before I even probably knew you could buy them. So I basically, I just took some, some cheap wire that I had laying around. I would guess this is maybe 14 gauge probably. And obviously I have four power poles. So you've got your in here and then you've got uh, four plugs you can use and I just basically daisy chain them together so for for every one of these that's doubled so basically there's two wires here two wires here two wires here and then one wire at the end there for all the doubled wires I used the 45 amp power pole because it's got this open slot so you can kind of cram more wire in there and crimp it in and then for the very last one you can see there's there's not a doubled up wire so I just used the 30 amp power pole. So it's just got the little bit smaller circle there. But yeah, they just, you know, it's very crude, but it works. So you just crimp two wires together and daisy chain the next one into the next one. I tried to put some heat shrink around it. Obviously it didn't work out so well on uh, that guy, but you know, it, it works. And I've been using this for quite a few years now in the car actually. So haven't had any problems with it. So that's it, you know, you can just build your stuff. If you can if you can dream it, you can build it. So there you go, nothing fancy, just a little homebrew power pole distribution block, and it works. Thanks for writing in. Next, we've got a question about batteries and cars and radios. The other day, I left my Yaesu FTM 400 on while I was at work. The pretty picture book for the radio says it draws about a half an amp on standby, if math serves me right. I drew about four and a half amp hours uh, out of my car battery that is rated in cold cranking amps. Insert maths here. Yeah, good luck with that one. I travel a lot for work, and if I took Monday through Friday trip, my battery could be dead, and I could need a jump start. Solutions I've thought about have a relay that is hooked to battery power that is closed with ignition power with a bypass switch to supply power when I'm stationary without the engine running. No ignition power equals radio is off unless powered by the switch. Makes sense. Or put a charge controller between the car battery and a secondary battery that only powers the radio. Secondary battery dies equals I start the car and the secondary battery starts charging. Could also work. Uh, I've thought about ways to isolate a secondary battery with diodes and nothing seems to work in my head. Any thoughts or ideas that uh, you have? Any thoughts or ideas that you have or have heard from other folks? That's a tongue twister. <laughs> so I thought about this for a bit. And uh, the first option would be this. You could take a small foldable solar panel like this put it up on your dashboard. Now, obviously you're gonna need good sun, but then you can take that and connect it into a cheap charge controller. This is just from Harbor Freight. And see here, we've got no current going in. So if you're parked in a shady spot or you're up north where it's not typically sunny, this isn't gonna be a good option, but that's just going right into the cigarette lighter and that can charge your battery. And just to show you, I'll go ahead and put the solar panel outside for a second. And now, as you can see, I'm getting Oh, about 0.4 uh, to maybe half an amp of current going into the battery right now. So it can keep it topped off if you have good sun. But that seems kind of silly because if you can remember to put up solar, uh, you can probably remember to turn your battery off, right? So I've got a dumb question. Wouldn't it make sense just to take your car to like a, a mobile stereo installation place and just have them hook your uh, radio up to the ignition? Uh, I know that's done with a lot of car stereos and, and especially, uh, you know, if you hear the guys with the subwoofers and stuff, a lot of that uh, is, is powered by the ignition. So that would be what I would do. I, I wonder if you're just thinking too hard in this 
uh, adding a secondary battery with relays and stuff or, or a charge controller in there uh, or having it hooked up with a relay while all viable uh, and, and definitely usable solutions, um, I, think, I think that just seems like extra work. I would just go run down to the local, you know, generic in car, car install uh, auto place and, and be done with it. So hopefully that helps. But uh, yeah, I've been in that position. I've, I've actually had my radios drain my batteries and it sucks. Uh, have jumper cables in your car. Number one, number one bit of advice. Have jumper cables. So many people, uh, I, I've jumped so many people that don't have jumper cables. And I'm like, how do you not have jumper cables? That's like... It's like car 101, so that's my first advice. So go get it hooked up professionally. You'll have no problem. But thanks for writing in. That is a great question. Lastly, something very, very near and dear to me. This young man is asking about antennas. Imagine that. He says, Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the channel. Uh, thank you. As a new ham, your content has been very helpful. I have an ICOM 2730A and the 7300. I want to get into POTA and have ordered the ACU FT891 based on your favorable reviews. Awesome, congratulations. What would you recommend for a portable antenna? I was going to grab the buddy stick, but they want 60 bucks for the shock legs and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so here, here's something that I put a lot of thought into because it's very easy to just go out and buy an antenna, which is not what I did. And what I would love to see more people do is actually build an antenna. I built at least three, maybe four antennas before I ever bought a commercial one. I, I, made, a, I made a 2040 fan dipole for home. I think when I was still a technician, I made like a six or a, or a 10 meter dipole. Um, and then my first one, once I fell in love and, and discovered portable radio and decided that that is a thing that I need to do, I made a KG6 HQD, God rest your soul, uh, speaker wire antenna for 20 meters, and it worked fantastic. I'll put links in the description for uh, my video, and, and don't watch my video. Go watch Jerry's video, Jerry KG6 HQD. Um, I, I think just learning how to make an antenna is, is such, a, such an important thing in amateur radio, and it doesn't have to be a dipole. There's, there's a lot of kits, so like this one right here. This is the Car Tenna, C A H R Tenna from Coffee and Ham Radios. Uh, they just came out with uh, a slightly new and improved version of this. This antenna is fantastic. This is an NFET half wave. You learn how to wrap a toroid. You learn how to cut a, an antenna for resonance. It's it's nice and compact. I think they're about seventy five bucks. Again, I'll leave links for all this stuff. Not affiliated with any of these guys. These are just things that I like. If you're doing QRP, here's the uh, K six A R K and fed half wave just that little that little toroid right there and the bnc that's the antenna and again you get you learn how to solder you learn how to solder really small components and again you're tuning an antenna another great one the km4 ack and fed half wave notice the pattern here i'm kind of a fan of the nfed half waves but here you know you're again you're wrapping the toroid you're you're soldering the resistor and the or a capacitor rather and the magnet wire and everything and you're 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 building something you're learning if you don't have an analyzer if you're in a club or, or you know another ham, see if somebody has an analyzer they can let you borrow or maybe they can come out for, for a half a day and help you make the antenna or something. It's just, it's such a great learning experience to make your own antenna. Uh, I, I think everyone should, should definitely build their own antennas uh, at least once or twice to kind of understand the fundamentals of what's going on in there. And if, if you want to buy, uh, buy one later, you know, Knock yourself out. My first commercial antenna was a Wolf River Coils because I wanted uh, I wanted all the bands. It does 80 through 6, and it's very compact. It's very inexpensive. I think it's maybe 150, 160 bucks, something like that. Um, huge, huge fan of the DX Commander. That's I'd probably say that's a little more advanced for like your first antenna build, uh, but certainly not out of the realms of, of possibilities for anyone to do it. You just have more bands. But you, I mean, I have uh, on my DX Commander Expedition, I've got. 40, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10, all on one vertical antenna. It takes about 15 minutes to set up. You can put full legal limit through it. Um, the benefit of that is that it doesn't need any kind of transformer to, to match your impedance. It's just resonant. You don't need a tuner or anything like that. You asked about tuners. I'm a big fan of resonant antennas, so uh, I, I don't use tuners at all. Um, but you certainly could. You know, it's, it's not a bad thing to have in your arsenal. Uh, the LDG is certainly a fantastic brand, so I, uh, I've, I don't own one myself, but I've, I have used them and 
I know others that have him and speak very highly of him, so I don't think he'd be wrong there. And you could get a 9-1 to with that. But um, to me, that's just more stuff to bring and, and more points of failure. So that's kind of why I'm a big fan of the, the resonant antennas. Uh, even even though yeah there are some losses with a with an NFED half wave they're negligible, so that's what I would recommend. <laughs> uh, ask twenty different people, you're going to get twenty different answers. But you know, do some research. See, are, are you know, are you team? I want to make an antenna, or do you just want to go buy one? Again, I highly recommend making one. But that's what I would recommend. Fantastic question. Uh, thanks for writing in. Good luck with whatever route you end up going down. And most importantly, just get out there and have fun. That's that's the name of the game. Above everything else, get out there, play radio, have fun, and uh, do you. <laughs> so hope to catch you on the air someday soon, uh, hopefully park to park. And uh, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. So thanks for writing in. And that will conclude this episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, thanks so much for always writing in. You're always giving great content and great questions. We all get to learn as a community. If you do have a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the subject. That way it kind of stands out to me. And now hopefully we'll get your question answered. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at k8mrd. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash k8mrd radio stuff. And until next time, 73, guys.